I am going through a lot nowadays, lol. I can't help but laugh at my wife's suggestion because the only other option is to cry. So, on to my story. My best friend of eight years recently lost his job, so his apartment became too costly to afford. When he asked to move in with me till the end of the year, I agreed. He moved in with us at the start of this month. And after a few days, I noticed the two of them getting closer. But as I considered him a brother, an affair was the furthest thing from my mind. But as we all know, human depravity knows no bounds. So my wife approached me three days ago and said that she and my best friend have fallen in love. But out of respect for me, they've not done anything physical yet. They want the three of us to start a poly family, which will be the best solution in this scenario. She loves both of us and doesn't want to lose me. This is the true way to live by sharing love. My best friend also talked with me and said that he always had a crush on my wife and it would have been wrong to deny this crush because he didn't want to be dishonest to his true self. So my question is, do I even try to save my marriage or should I keep my sanity and run? Any other advice for me? Their audacity is mind-boggling and they need to be brought back to earth with a thump. But for the love of God, why didn't you punch him in the face right then and there? Start divorce proceedings and let the homeless, unemployed idiot have your faithless wife. They deserve each other. Betraying someone in the worst way imaginable, then trying to spin it as a positive development, like some oil executive flaming his latest tanker spill, actually makes those endangered sea otters look cool with their new black fur. Not only spinning it as a positive, but telling OP he's selfish if he doesn't go along with this. She loves them both, so if he leaves, he denies her love? The idiot friend wanted to act upon his feelings of his true self, so if OP has a problem with this, then he's not allowing his friend to be honest. His wife and friends already made this decision before he moved in, and then told OP, this is best, with zero input from him. These are extreme levels of attempted gaslighting, and OP needs to put that dumpster fire in his rear view ASAP. Agree. OP, he moved in at the start of the month. That was very fast falling in love. I'm not sure I could believe that nothing happened between them physically. For either one of them to approach you this quickly and to him living with you all means something emotional at the very least has been going on for much longer than I think they're telling you about. Trust for me would be irreparably broken, most likely forever. Your marriage is dead. Kick them out and move on. Update. I let my best friend move in with us and now he and my wife have gotten close and want us to start a poly family. Many of you are asking why I'm not angrier, why I didn't punch him in the face, etc. What does that get me? Other than a chance to spend a night in a police lockup, I can't punch my way to a world where my best friend and wife are better people. I have to live in this world where I have to deal with these two. So I have asked him to leave and he said that he'll leave by Monday and I didn't want to argue really, so I agreed. My wife is saying she's willing to stay monogamous to me if that's what I want and we can get through this by attending some counseling, but I'm not sure if things can go back to how they were. Also, the house is in my elder brother's name and I don't even pay rent, so I have to see a lawyer to understand my options better. I talked to my brother and he said he would ask me to move out the moment I'm ready and if I move out, she has to move out too, but I will meet with some lawyers to find out how it goes down. And no, I don't want to be in a poly relationship. I would rather be single. Wow, what a way to thank your host. I'm sorry this has happened, but it sounds like you've got a good head on your shoulders. OP, they can have each other. Get through it with some counseling. What a frustrating line to read after she did that crap to you. I wouldn't even wait to kick them out. Start the divorce process ASAP. She's going to be sneaking him in through both back doors in no time. Your wife is willing to stay monogamous if that's what you want? How generous of her. So if you stay together, you'll know the only reason she stays faithful isn't that she made a vow because she loves you. It's because you made a big fuss over a trivial matter. You'd spend the rest of your life wondering when she'll decide she needs another idiot more than you need a loving wife. Sometimes what shocks me the most is how these people respond in such situations. You gave him till Monday. I'm not asking you to beat the crap out of him, but at least be a man. I hate to say this, 
but now it's like you're fine with it. The moment I think people cannot go lower, seriously kick him out of the house now. Why wait till Monday? How do you even have the guts to wait till Monday? What's wrong with you? This is pathetic. Update 2. I let my best friend move in with us, and now he and my wife have gotten close and want us to start a poly family. My friend moved out on Monday, and I was not at the house when he moved out, so I don't know what he and my wife talked about. And my brother has formally asked us to vacate his house by the end of this month. And since I've not paid any rent for the time I've lived here, I don't have any squatting rights. So I told my wife that we would be homeless by the end of the month and she should make her arrangements. I will just go and stay with my brother for a few weeks and my wife will go God knows where. Then I'll move back in and change the locks. She says that we should do marriage counseling and she values our marriage more than any poly relationship and she was never going to go ahead without my consent. Also, she's gone no contact with my friend, and now we should focus on repairing our marriage. LOL. Sorry, I couldn't stop myself from LOLing while writing this. I am staying in the guest room and enjoying some nice takeout food. Not very healthy, but delicious nonetheless. She's been trying to be more attentive and loving towards me, but I'm just counting my days. Anyway, that's my update. Thanks for all the support. I'm so sorry this happened to you. This is such a huge amount of disrespect. I honestly wonder if he had asked you specifically, besides needing a place to stay, to see if he could get with your wife because he has a crush on her or because they already had an affair going. Either way, disgusting. Your friend is scum. Your wife is scum too. Block both from your life and get that divorce. Best of luck, OP. Take all the time you need. Get high with friends. Pick yourself up and move on when it's time. One of my best mates, who was the only one married, asked if I and a couple of others wanted to go on a trip together. We have a small friend group of five people and we haven't done much together recently as life has gotten in the way. His wife looked and found a place for us to stay. He of course had to include his wife in the trip. A nice gal, I guess, just kind of wanted it to be a mates only trip. It's fine and we're all used to it by now as they got married around 10 years ago. Sarah has been that way ever since. She found a cheap place and rented it. They figured out what it was per person and gave us the numbers on what we'd be paying per person. Well, I did the math and they didn't include splitting the price six ways. They did it five. They did not include his wife in splitting it. I called it out immediately and said I'm not paying another person's share so that they might not pay twice. No one else really commented on it, but I wasn't having it. I felt it was unfair. My mate said he shouldn't have to include his wife in the price, especially since they found and booked the place with their own money. I said either she pays or doesn't go. He ended up telling me, no, now you're not going. And if any of you agree, you won't be going either. So I'll just go with my wife or something along those lines. A whole argument followed. It caused a huge rift. I still think I was right and I don't understand how he doesn't see it that way. Seriously, is she not another guest? Why would she not have to pay for a spot too? Am I the idiot for telling him she should have been included in the price? You are the idiot. You're splitting it by the room. If he and his wife are sharing a room, then it makes sense that they pay for their room only. Splitting it by six people would mean that she's helping cover the cost of all of your rooms. Also, they invited you. You don't get to decide whether or not she goes. Get over yourself. Have to disagree with you. Every trip I've been on, including couples, pays the singles. You're not just paying for a room. You're paying for all the food and everything else. The security deposit will be refunded at the end of the trip if no damage is caused. So that isn't part of the payment. OP should have approached it a different way, though. Since they invited him, he should have just said, why are we not splitting it six ways? He should have thanked them and said he couldn't go if he disagreed. But he's not the idiot. Your friend and his wife wanted to go on a trip. They invited you guys along. You're whining that it's not a friend's only trip, despite the fact that it was never intended to be one. You demand she pays for an extra room, even though they use one. Jesus, I'd have kicked you out too. Update. My mate and I fixed it. All good. He had already paid for the better room by putting down more of the security deposit and not putting that in the total price. I was an idiot, and he was a bit of one too. 
This Christmas, my wife and I plan to visit my parents. It was only supposed to be the four of us. However, mom informed me my brother and his wife would also be visiting. My brother and his wife alternate whose family they see, and this year was supposed to be with her parents. It's why we decided to visit this year. I don't want my brother's wife anywhere near my wife. My brother's wife has what's called illness anxiety disorder. My lovely wife is a doctor. My brother's wife currently has injunctions against her from two different GPs because her worries about being ill with illnesses she doesn't have turned into harassment towards them. She's been sacked from her last two jobs over it. At one, she wouldn't stop saying that she had the same or similar cancer to one of her colleagues at the firm. The type of cancer was only found in men, but she was convinced. More than once, she's been warned about NHS fraud for lying to access services and treatments she isn't eligible for. For example, she once attempted to forge a referral from a GP to a specialist because she was convinced the GP was wrong about her being fine. As a result, she's also been banned from more than one hospital A&E unless it's a true emergency. The global restrictions were a perfect excuse for us to get married with no guest and send photos and videos to everyone afterward. We had already booked the church, but the vicar said that she would still do the wedding if we wanted, and we did. I've explained the facts about my brother's wife to my wife, and she says she trusts me, and with her record of harassment against doctors, my wife doesn't want to be around her. My brother's wife has already contacted me, asking my wife to call her because she has medical questions. I told her not to do it again. Besides the ethical situation of treating a family member, my brother's wife doesn't have any of the illnesses she thinks she does. She also emailed my wife once at her work, using a general email she found online. My wife didn't respond to it when it was forwarded to her. She believes my wife will see she's right and give her all the referrals, medications, etc. that she wants. The pandemic has stressed my wife, and the last thing I want for her is this. I've told my brother and my parents that I'll never allow his wife near my wife so long as she carries on like she is. I told my parents if my brother and his wife are present at Christmas, we'll come on New Year's. Now my brother and his wife said that they'll come on New Year's. She is desperate to meet my wife, and given her track record, I refuse to agree. My parents agree with my brother. The three of them also believe her past behavior has been over-exaggerated, but she was nearly sanctioned in addition to the injunctions and NHS fraud allegations. Am I the idiot for wanting to protect my wife from this? My wife agrees, but as it is my family, I'm the one pushing back because it would be unfair to her. Not the idiot. It sounds like your family is enabling her neurosis and she's pretty clearly going to harass your wife since she refuses to take no for an answer. I'm proud of you for protecting her from this especially since your parents are entirely okay with trying to smush the two of them together. Dollars to donuts? Sister-in-law changed their holiday plans when she found out OP and his wife were visiting her in-laws. It isn't okay for everyone to put your wife's career in jeopardy to soothe the ego of someone who's obviously a narcissist. And your brother and parents certainly aren't doing your sister-in-law any favors, allowing this behavior to continue. Not the idiot. You and your wife need to have a united front because at this rate, they'll show up at your front door next. If I were you, I'd go on the condition she's not allowed to talk about her health conditions to you or your wife. Make sure it's clear to everyone and when she breaks it, tell everyone you're leaving because she's broken her promise. That way her presence won't be the problem, her lies will be. Or just stick to your guns and refuse to go. I'd invite the parents to your home so they can't surprise show up. I'm afraid I have to disagree with going. The amount of damage the sister-in-law could do might be severe, especially when she's been known for forging other doctor's signatures. However, this time it's family. So when, not if, she gets access to her docs or signatures, it could spell career ending for your wife. Sister-in-law hasn't changed. She's already harassing the wife. Growing up, it was pretty clear that my parents weren't happy. They have nothing in common, and he always seemed miserable when he was home. He lived and breathed his job, neurosurgeon. He was an okay dad, a pretty bad husband, and when I was a senior in high school, he left my mom for his affair partner, Abby, who was also a surgeon at the hospital. 
My mom was humiliated, and it took her a long time to heal emotionally. My brother and I didn't talk to my dad for about a year and slowly have resumed contact. He proposed to Abby nine months ago, and while I saw it coming, it still felt like a blow. And I was upfront about, I don't know if I want to go to the wedding or not. He's been with Abby for almost three years, and he acts like a different person. He is like a giddy teen, and it's really weird to watch. Objectively, I get that she's much better for him. He had nothing in common with my mom, and he needed someone who was more driven and passionate. Also, my mom hated all of his hobbies, camping, hiking, beach, because she didn't want to get dirty, and they just weren't compatible. Abby is a bit more of a tomboy, and they do everything together. He's really happy, and I guess I'm happy for him. I recently visited them and agreed to go to the wedding. My dad and I talked privately, and I said I would never fully forgive him for cheating, but I can see that he's really happy. He said he wished the best for my mom, but he didn't understand how important compatibility was when he was young. And then he laughed and said, and if they didn't want him to cheat, he wouldn't have a bed at work. This made me angry because from other jokes I've heard, from a mutual friend, not him, the two of them were messing around at work, hopefully not in the hospital, but it just reminded me of my mom being the last to know and how he always couldn't wait to go to work. So I snapped at him that he's such an idiot, can never resist the urge to make dumb jokes. He teased way too much when I was a teen and it affected our relationship and said I wasn't going to the wedding. I stormed off and he just texted me sorry and nothing else. Abby sent me a long message about how it was a pretty tame joke and just his personality, and I'm being too sensitive. She asked me to reconsider. Unfortunately, the wedding is at the end of the month, so I don't have much time to decide. Not the idiot. Your dad lacks empathy, and from your descriptions, he might be playing in narcissist territory. Sorry doesn't mean, I'm sorry, I see that I was insensitive. Abby's note clarifies that the two of them don't think he was insensitive, but he was and you're better off with some distance here. I'm just wondering what the mistress was trying to accomplish by telling OP they shouldn't be bothered by jokes about their affair. How did she expect that to come across? Why did she think that would help? You are not the idiot, OP. You can choose not to hold a grudge against your dad without condoning his actions by attending the wedding. The joke shows he doesn't feel the proper, if any, remorse for betraying his family so why should he expect anything from them? When you learn you're incompatible with your spouse, then you divorce, not cheat. Nobody twisted his arm. He didn't have to betray his family to find happiness. Seriously, the side chick expects you to listen to her? Wow, she needs some self-reflection. That certainly explains why they like each other so much. Not only does she not get to decide what you do and don't find funny for you, if she doesn't understand why this is a sensitive subject for you by default, but she also shouldn't be weighing in. Tell her that if she really wants you to reconsider, she'll quit trying to justify his behavior, even when he acknowledges he screwed up, and give you space until you're ready to risk dealing with whatever both of them might inadvertently let slip in their determination to ignore the fact that their love story had casualties again, whenever that might be.